Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. If you remember your history of early America, the name Ponce de Leon should strike an old chord. He was the rascal who went looking for the fountain of youth somewhere in Florida. But all he could find was orange juice, which may have helped, but not enough. All of which adds up to really nothing, except that the heavy in our Let George Do It adventure is a character named Ponce the Lion. And from my vantage point, he seems to be quite a character. But suppose I let Buster here tell you all about old Ponce. Dear Mr. Valentine, I believe that Honolulu has been called the melting pot of the Pacific. Well, our little town of Baja Junction could very likely be the boiling pot. But the weather can't prevent our maintaining a pleasant, peaceful, forward-looking town. That is, for the past two years. Tomorrow it will all change. Tomorrow our town will boil in quite a different way. Unless someone like yourself can stop it. I was given your name by Fail Minahan, who lives here. But please report direct to me just as soon as you can. You see, Baja Junction is about to receive back its most disturbing citizen, a man named Ponce the Lion. Sincerely, J. H. Frankel, director of the Baja Junction Trade Relations Club. From jail? Jail. Exactly, Miss Brooks. Jail. You know, that's where criminals are occasionally sent. Do you mind if we sit down, Mr. Frank? Oh, excuse me, of course. You've had a tiring trip. Oh, it wasn't. Too bad, but the heat yes, was... Yes, pretty... yes. Well, uh, I'm just on my way out. You see, I've asked Lawrence Pinckney to step in. Pinckney? A secretary of our organization. Been with us for years. He's more familiar with the facts than I am. What facts? Oh. Facts about Ponce the Lion, of course. You uh, wanted to see me, Mr. Frank. Oh, yes, yes, Lawrence. Come in, come in. Uh, Miss Brooks, Mr. Valentine, Mr. Pinckney. How do you do? Hello, Mr. Pleasure, Pinkney. indeed, pleasure. I've explained things. Now you'll take over. Uh, of course. Oh, yes. wait a minute. So far you've explained nothing. Maybe we can have dinner together. Uh, goodbye, Miss Brooks. If you need me, you know where to find me, Lawrence. Uh, I don't know how he does it. Does what? All that energy, drive, always organizing. Listen. That's more the style of the town, I'm afraid. Street singer. That's why most people live here. Hmm. Sounds nice and sleepy, like I am in this heat. But we must earn a living, mustn't we? The trade relations club is, is giving a great boost to the business All of right, the town. All right, Mr. Pinkney, let's get back to my business. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, please understand about Mr. Frankel's running off. Mm. He didn't think it uh, would look well if he seemed too uh, active in this, uh, his position and all. This uh, this business of Ponce, I mean. Ponce the lion, somebody just out of jail, right? Yes, Ponce is a strange fellow. Big, stupid, mean, conniving. Never did a lick of honest work in his life. Okay, he's unpopular. Where do you get the fancy name? Ponce? It's his given name. Oh, uh, you mean the lion. <laughs> He was a bouncer for years at Cho Lee's dance hall. Been raised in the Oriental section, I guess. But he tacked that on when he tried to turn professional boxer. Town might have got rid of him then. We all hoped we did. What happened? Well, it was too much. He quit. Couldn't stand getting knocked out every night. All right, he's big and he falls down. But I don't see Mr. what... Mr. Valentine, I realize all this may seem uh, unimportant to an outsider. But Ponce has been in jail for manslaughter. And now, from all we hear, his sole interest is in committing murder. This Ponce is just full of the old Ned, isn't he? We'll see if he carried out his threat. But first, let's take a minute off for this. Now let's get back and see if Buster can throw any more light on Ponce. Well, uh, there isn't much more you need to... Uh... Oh, who, what, when, where, why? Come on, come on. Well, uh, his uh, his manslaughter sentence was uh, based on a knifing. 
three years ago. Now it seems that uh, Pons has decided he should murder everyone who testified against him, who helped to put him in jail. You mean witnesses? How many were there? Well, now, see here, Mr. Frankel isn't crazy. Why don't you ask me the important thing? How could we possibly know that big ape's intentions, know what Pons is going to do? I didn't ask that because I assume they're just guesses and rumors, easy gossip. Tough guy wants revenge, Ponce the Lion. <laughs> Even the name is hardly credible. Oh, many things are hardly credible here in Baja Junction, Mr. Valentine. <laughs> yeah. But you're quite right. Guess is in rumor. That's why you're here. You mean to tag Ponce around and find out what he's up to? To go at this thing sensibly. Uh, what Mr. Frankel suggested was that before you get all wound up in details of who might need protection... You uh, should find out the truth. Ah. This Ponce is a menace, I suppose. So an ounce of prevention. <laughs> that seems to be a good idea. <laughs> That's all your job is. <sighs> it's hot, isn't it? <clears throat> Would you like a glass of lemonade? Don't blame you for looking me up, my lad. There's no better man on any park bench than Phil Minahan to tell you this. I looked you up, Mr. Minahan, because I'm curious. You recommended me for this job. Why? You don't know me from Adam. <laughs> and vice versa, you're thinking. Of course, lad, of course. Well, my qualifications are a copious curiosity, a world full of people to waste it on. And, and a lot of words. Yeah. I was going to say, and a life full of time. All wasted. And this is the best place in the world for wasting. And once upon a time, I saw your ad in the newspaper. Okay, newspaper. okay. Is this the street that Choley's dance hall is on? Avoid the chickens and follow your nose. It's around the next corner, and I wouldn't walk this far for everyone. <laughs> I'm flattered. Mr. Valentine, when they say that Ponce is no good, it's true. He's not. You're sure? I watch people I know. And you do well to watch them, too, all of them. Oh, like the guys who hired me, that trade relations outfit? <laughs> now you're warming up. They'll trade anybody's relations, I'm thinking. Oh, it's business, mind your business. But why in a town like this? Why should a lot of happy, ignorant shopkeepers of every nationality let themselves be all organized and progressive when they ought to spend their time on the beach like I do? <laughs> they ought to be fanning themselves. Hold it, the... hold it. In the hand. <laughs> Here he is, my lad. This is the horror. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, always kidding, ain't you, man? <laughs> well, say something. Ain't you glad to see me back? You're Ponce, aren't you? Beat it, Taurus, beat it. Oh, sure, sure, anything you say. I understand you're real tough. What's he doing, kidding? <laughs> yeah. You're a joker, too. Uh, I might have known. Any friend of men I have. We're not friends. <laughs> uh, you're the guy I want to see. Now, look, I'm busy. Understand you just got out of jail, Ponce. Understand you got some kind of a big plan. Everybody talks about Ponce, don't they? I don't know what this town must have been like when I wasn't around. <laughs> well, I've changed. I'm different. Oh, God. Get out of my way. Look out, George. Never mind shoving, Buster. I'm going to stay here until you I jump. I made a discovery, see? Yeah, what? <laughs> me. <laughs> big dummy. Yeah, me. Right here in the same part of town I was raised in. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's not till I cool off in jail <laughs> that I wake up and get it. All right, I'll bite. Get what? You discover the Pacific Ocean or something? Hans de Leon found the fountain of youth, George. Uh, huh? <laughs> You're a kid too, ain't you, baby? <laughs> Hans, there's men in this town afraid of you. Huh? And there's gossip that's been saying that you've threatened oh, to... No, no, don't what? Don't, don't. Try to mix me up. Yeah. Uh, sure, I'll tell anybody. Why not? I told everybody in town. The guys who put me in jail, I hate them, see. I like to kill them. But now I'm different. So, what's all the sweat about? Okay, what's the big discovery? Why are you different? I can tell you, my lad. Uh, you're on your way across the street, I suppose, Pat. Yeah, sure, yeah. What, what, what up? What? I go there every day, don't I? What's across the street? A joss hole. Huh? I was raised with the Orientals, tourists. 
Now leave me alone, huh? The Joss House? Well, it's a place of worship to the ancient gods. So I got used to being alone and thinking in prison. Is it criminal to do it now? You think? Pray to Pray to the old-fashioned Edens that know ten times as much as us. Yeah, sure. That's the discovery of old Ponce, hey? Big, dumb Ponce, smarter than all of you. Oh, brother, what kind of a thing Get out of my way. Hey, George! And stay up! Certainly hard to find. At his house, they didn't know he decided to go swimming for the afternoon. This must be the cabana over here. Yeah, Mr. Frankel. Around this side, I guess. wonder why he didn't tell us in his letter, Angel, that he was a witness to that manslaughter of Ponce's. I don't know. Taxi driver who brought him here knew it. I suppose everyone knows. Hmm. Frankel. Frankel. George, he's, he's been stabbed. Just as Ponce threatened. Oh, just a moment, please. Uh, please, no, come in, please. I'm sorry, Grandpa. Uh, I'm looking for Ponce. Uh, yes, every day Ponce comes to the Joss house, but it is not the custom to disturb I'm anyone. I'm sorry, friend. Something's happened. He's the first man i got to see about it before the rest of the town comes here. Mr. Minahan. Hey, I was on my way to look for him, my lad. Did you find Frankel? Did you see him? Yeah. We found Frankel, all right. Well, thank heaven for that, you see, I've caught on to what that big crazy Ponce is up to. Here, this man is the Bonds. He can explain. The what? The Bonds, lady. He's the high mogul keeper of the place. He tends to the idols in there and the shadows. He maintains the incense, joss sticks, or whatever it's called. I would be only too glad to explain. And there's an idol that Ponce plays to. This man here told me so. It's your fay, the Lord of Sudden Death. What? Oh, look, Menahan, I got work to do, and I want to find and out. Every what... day, Ponce comes here to pray to your fay. To the bringer of death. Don't you understand me, lad? Ponce has been here all the time. Right here. Praying Mr. Frankel to death. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Back to George Valentine. Baja Junction, the boiling pot of the Pacific, as Mr. Frankel called it. A place where almost anything can happen, as Mr. Frankel himself found out. Because now he's been murdered. But the murderer used a knife, and the man who hated Mr. Frankel, a man named Ponce, has only been praying for his death in a joss house. Well, if your name is George Valentine, you barely know what a joss house is. This tower, the just. Over there in the shadow, you high money god. Many joss sticks are burned to you high. <laughs> That's more for the likes of us, eh, Valentine? Hold on, Mr. Minahan. Eh? This yofa you mentioned. Oh, uh, it can be seen from here. There. The end of that room. Oh, it's a big thing, isn't it? Life size, as it should be, as uh, the bringer of death. Now, well, isn't that a ghastly idea, Black Face? Look at that, would you? And a clenched black fist stretched out before him, the Lord of Sudden uh, Death. Please, please, oh. not talk loud. Please, there are people in here. Is that him over there in front of the idol? There on the floor? That Ponce? It is forbidden to intrude when a man is alone with his own thoughts and prayers. I said, is that him under the fancy silk robe lying on that prayer mat? Sure, it's him. I've seen him carrying that robe around. Born and raised in the Oriental section, I told you he was. He's moving, George. Mm. Uh, I'm afraid we have disturbed yeah, he him. he saw us. Here he comes. Uh, it wasn't the Bond who told me he, had, he was here. It, it was a I woman. I thought I told you to leave me alone. Like you left Franklin alone? Frankel. Yeah, let's get out of here, Ponce. I want to talk to you. I will not. 
You interrupt me, see. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Praying people to death. He's told that to several people. So you wouldn't know whether Frankel's dead yet or not, huh? <laughs> it works. <laughs> Pretty neat, ain't it? You mean you've been working hard to set up an alibi? What's that crap? Oh, I saw you come in here a couple of hours ago. Minahan came here just a few minutes before I did just now and says you've been here all the time. Still, I don't believe it. Oh, hey, move away, will you, Mac? I'm busy. And you no more believe all this idle stuff than I do. Big discovery of Ponce. How to set up an alibi, that's all. Praying a man to dead, old brother. That takes the cake. But there is others that saw him, Valentine. They all say the same thing. <laughs> you're so smart. Sure, you're so smart. Get out of here. Leave me alone. I've got work to do. Okay, Buster, you win. But you better hang on to that alibi when the town starts pointing its finger. Wait a minute, George. Ponce, what work? What do you still have to do here? Pray I'm dead. Pray every one of them dead. You don't believe it, eh? <laughs> Your face shows me how. He's a great old piece of iron. Pray him dead. I'm trying to hurry. It was Mr. Frankel who prepared the notes who realized... But them, Ponce said, them. And Mr. Pinckney, you mentioned before there was more than one witness to that knifing that Ponce did two years ago. Well, uh, there was Mr. Blake. He's with our organization here. Who? Uh, Blake testified he helped put Ponce in jail. But if Ponce has an alibi, then I don't the police see... police are working on the murder. Miss Brooks is reporting to them now, but I keep worrying about my own job here. Well, here, here. Here's the list. Franklin and Blake, they were the main ones, but there's a couple of others. It's a newspaper clipping. Yes, there were several other witnesses. Uh -huh. Where does Mr. Blake live? Well, Frankel had only told you all of this. Uh, my car's right outside. I'll show you. Only, let's see. Blake told me he was going somewhere. Oh, yes, his club. That's it. He's a member of a club here. Maybe if we round up all these guys, then we get to work on the murder. Until now, I've been wasting my time. The one guy in this town who couldn't have murdered Frankel is Ponce the Lion. Blake! Blake! Now you're wasting your time, Pinkney. Mr. Blake's dead, too. But, but he's been stabbed! That's what you said happened to Mr. Oh, Frankel. stop chattering, will but, you? This just happened a few minutes ago. What? Alone here in his room, reading. But he was facing the door, wasn't he? He's a big guy, pretty husky. Well, uh, there's only one entrance to the yeah, room. Yeah, that's what I mean. Come on. What? See, the door has a latch. So whoever it was had to knock. I, I don't understand. I'm, I'm going to call the police. Be quiet, will you? Wait a minute. Listen. Hey, what's down this hall? Well, the halls all lead to the back court. Yeah. Steps. There's a man out there. The other side of the wall. We'd never catch up. Well, that's not the way to the gate. Wait a minute. Here's a trash can. That thing we heard first sounded metallic. Look. What? Sure. Sure, we were in Blake's room just a second after the murderer was. Saw us coming and ran. Here, look. A knife. Uh-huh. No, no, don't touch it. The knife that was used both times, I'd guess. Let's, uh, let's get on to the police station as fast you as mean, we can. You mean let's telephone the police? Give them those other names fast if they haven't got them already? But you and I, friend, are going to start correcting our mistakes, and I'll do the driving. I've never been in a Joss house. <clears throat> I've, I've heard about this one. Yeah, a little more deserted than it was. Old boy with the beards out for supper, I guess. It's so dark. With no lights, I can't... <laughs> hey, Valentine. Yeah. Minahan? Right. right here. I've been sitting right here by the entrance. Just exactly the way you told me. Oh, it's you. Hello, Phil. Well? And I tell you, my lad, everybody else seems to have left. But not him. He's still in there, Ponce? It's too dark to see from Come on. I, I'm telling you, my lad, that he hasn't even said... Yes, well, yes. Well, why do you bother him? He couldn't have done this one either. This one? A man named Blake was murdered. What? He was big and pretty husky. 
And to have been stabbed the way he was, whoever did it must have been a lot bigger. Of course, like Ponce. But if he was We're down here... We're correcting mistakes. Like we're not worrying about how you shouldn't disturb a man worshipping an idol. Well, be very careful, Lee. Here, follow me. It's right through here. Oh, these big blast tin guns. Don't you dare run into Okay, them. this is it. Yo, Fay. I can see that outstretched fist. I've got a match. Yeah. You can see Ponch, too, all right. There he is, under his robe. Stretched out just like a silly frog. Yeah. He won't be for long. Careful, Mr. Valentine. Ponce is very rough when Oh, he... I know. He took a poke at me. So let's kick that fancy silk robe of his. Well, he know. He's not there. No. No, just a robe. And a bunch of rags rolled up underneath. Phil, I thought you said you were watching... And we drove here fast, so fast he couldn't have made it, could he? Yeah, we beat him back. But Phil Excuse was... You. Our Irish friend here sat by the door, not by the open window. What? Here, look. The other side of the idol. The place he spread himself out was right next to that, at the end of the room. Sure. You don't even have to stretch to get out of here, do you? But people saw him in here. They... In a place where it's forbidden to disturb anybody in meditation. In a place where a man might lie flat on his robe and stay that way for hours. Perfect alibi. A place where nobody'd notice when you slip a few rags under your robe on the floor and then you slide out the window. And getting back in would be just as easy. Shh, shh, shh. I think uh. I just heard something. Huh. Somebody's coming. I'm going to get out of here. Come on, quick, away from the window. Come on, back out by the end. It's hurry. Uh, Valentine. Look back. Look. See the shadow in the window there? Yeah. Get through the curtains here, quick. This is where you were. Let's wait here until... Bring that hand. Hey, uh, you still out there watch, dog? I've seen you all along from where I've been meditating. Pretty feeble fraud, isn't it? Back into the robe to finish his act. Sure, I seen you, Minahan. I... Yeah, me. Hello. Oh. It's a party. Yeah, sure. To get your fingerprints to match against those on a knife. To haul you in for two murders. <laughs> Not tonight. Look out, Valentine! No. Get out of my way, you idiots. Run away! Mr. Valentine? No, I'm all right. I just hate to have it happen twice, that's all, if you hadn't gotten away. Well, I, I couldn't help it. I'm not oh, used to... Oh, skip it, would you? Did he get away? He ran back through the Joss house. There's a million entrances to that alley through the window. Yeah, and Minahan? He went after him. Oh, that'll do a lot of good. Funny you're knowing about the alley and this place, but you said you'd never been here before. What? Nothing. Nothing I say will do any good unless we get that big ape who committed the murders. Well, of course. Ponce was the one now, who... Now, listen, Buster... I know he did the dirty work. He always wanted to. But he's not bright enough to plan it. Not bright enough to take over an explanation for Mr. Frankel and mix it up to me. What? Oh, yeah, sure. I've been kicking myself because Frankel wrote me and then was killed. Only it was his own fault for handing the job of explaining things over to you. And you told me only what I needed to know for your time schedule. What time schedule? The one you cooked up for Ponce. I don't know what your angle is, but both Frankel and Blake were big shots in that same big money promotion outfit your secretary of. So I guess there is something to gain. And after all, you only had to encourage and help Ponce a little to get him dead. No, I... Now don't argue with me, Buster, because each time Ponce went right out from here and killed his man and came straight back. Well, how did he know where to find him? Now, she Unless here. somebody told him. Like you said, Blake told you he was going to be at his club. Sure, sure, you're the only one who knew where both men were. Because I still remember the last thing I heard Frankel say. It was, you know where to find me, Lawrence. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you know something? You're right. It doesn't mean a blame thing unless the police can beat the truth out of punts. And you'll never find him. He'll, he'll get away. Oh, I don't doubt it. Hey, where's Menahan? Hey, Menahan! Now get back inside the Joss house, Pinkney. I got about one second to keep this whole case from falling apart. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Minahan! Phil! 
Hey, Minahan. Yes, yes, my lad. I'm in here looking the place over. <laughs> here I am, and you know something. I'm all right. Oh, well, don't scare me like that. Come on, come on, let's get out of here. Well, it was only having a little bit of a word with Teo the jest that I was. Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> Valentine, you know, it's a strange and funny thing about people. Now, for instance, you take Ponce. He thought that thing with the black fist, Yo Fei, was something. And, well, maybe he had something. Manahan, what's happened to you? What kind of a yes, conversation? Yes, yes, let's get out of here, out of the dark. Look, look out, look out, look out. No, look out for your step, no. Ah, what do you mean? Incidentally, you better get hold of Mr. Pinky's arm while I explain this to you. The arm of Yo Fei is much longer. Look up there. Do you see it up there? With its clenched fist? Ah. Hey, Fergus. Oh, no, you don't, Pinkney. Hey, <laughs> Mr. Pinkney. Your poor dumb punch is still with us to talk. Yeah, how about that? He never got out. Lying there out colder than a mackerel. <laughs> he ran right into his own idol. Right into the iron fist of Yofe. You have just heard The Discovery of Ponce the Lion, another Let George Do It adventure. Robert Bailey was starred as George Valentine with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. David Victor and Jackson Gillis wrote the story, and the music was by Eddie Dunstetter. Now this is yours truly inviting you to another visit with Valentine, when you will again hear what happens when you let George do it. (laughs) 